We make history in times of joy. We make history in times of sadness. We make history in times of happiness. We make history in times of trouble and pain. But when destiny calls and the cycles of fear and hate are broken, the poets and bone carvers light up the skies in extraordinary colors, revealing the mysterious signs and secret codes that have driven the engine of history ever since time began. Yesterday, I saw the skies light up and the earth tremble. The streets reverberated with ecstatic drumming and sirens. Voices rose in righteous indignation through pillaging smoke hanging over the cities. These are turbulent times, but the story remains the same as before. So is a prayer on every lip everywhere on this planet. Free the imprisoned dream and let freedom reign as we plead on the edge of faded hopes waiting for the break of dawn. In my sleep, I wondered if the jack boot on Floyd's neck broke his bones. That was yesterday. This morning, I learned more about life, history, politics, and human existence, this time from an extraordinary perspective, the bone. I walked into a magical exhibition in my mind. If the essence of history is to free the imprisoned dream, then the hand that breaks the jail's lock is critical. Ya Asantua came to mind. She was a queen mother who led the Asante rebellion against British colonialists in 1900. I saw her iconic photograph when I was 10. Today, something struck me, but I could not put my finger on it. Eventually, I did. It was the way she held her gun. The bones in her fingers almost visible gave the impression she was just about to squeeze the trigger. Bones have a special potency and subtle spiritual energies. Their endurance is legendary, says General Pitika in Thule. Throughout the exhibition, the cartographer's skill is demonstrated with delicate finesse and in extraordinary detail with beads, colorful beads, web of beads, threaded beads on bone, blue for villages from the sky, perhaps, yellow for Battle of Adamawa, maybe, blue for the king's birthday, red for the decade his empire fell, beads tracing ancestral journeys through time and space, galaxies, oceans. Oh yes, the Atlantic Ocean. Trail of slave ships dropping bones of dead African slaves into the depths as they sailed to the Americas. The bones must still be there. Bones don't just disappear. There is a bridge of bones linking Africa and its diaspora, reminds General Pitika and Thule. I passed each bone sculpture, besieged by thoughts, also pleading for deeper meaning, meaning stripped of its surface, meaning stripped to the bone. Bones are evidence that we were alive three and a half million years ago and these are carriers of our memories says general pitika this is an extraordinary thought an extraordinary thought that we may share for an equal number of years <laughs>